what we discussed yesterday once after my screen has been shared probably you are now able to see my screen so yesterday we discussed about how we can connect to this machine using the private key so we have the private key and then the public key right so using private key how we can connect to the machine what we have created is what we have seen yesterday and if we can see today again i have started the linux practice machine then i got this different public ip address than the yesterday's one <clears throat> Okay, so who have done your registrations? Don't worry, I'll uh, give my email ID. So if any questions, anything else, just you can directly contact me. Okay, fine, fine. So yesterday, um, am I am I audible, folks? For all of you, am I audible? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes, Thanks. Sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So now I have. Uh, yesterday and day before yesterday we have created the machine isn't it so yesterday we have seen how to connect to, to this machine how many ways we can connect to this machine so as part of that we discussed using the windows machine how we can connect and using the linux machine how we can connect so these things we discussed right the key pair information is what we have discussed and then tools are also used for accessing the cloud machine is what we have discussed so we have the putty and win acp and moba xterm so using moba xterm we will connect to our machines throughout your devops and then aws course win acp and then putty are also good but comparatively Comparatively, mobile XTERM has a lot of features. That is the reason we will go with the mobile XTERM. And mobile XTERM is also coming up with the WSL2 Windows subsystem for Linux 2. It is a Linux lightweight Linux distribution, or we can say Linux driver, which is installing on top of your Windows machine. So using that Linux client, we can use SSH to connect to it, right? Yes, Git Bash also we can use to connect to it. Git Bash is also coming up with the WSL2, meaning the Linux compliance distribution. It will coming up with the Git, Git Bash also. However, so this is our case. So we have created our Linux mission, which is a Linux server. CLI command line interface server. This don't have the graphical user interface. So whatever the AWS machines with the operating system are with the distribution we are creating. So those are all called as the CLIs only. That means those are all called as the Linux server command line interfaces. So to this Linux server command line interface, Either we can connect from the Windows machine or we can connect from the Linux client installed in the Windows machine, like our mobile XTERM, isn't it? Now, if it is the Windows machine, then we can use PuTTY. We can use a tool called PuTTY installed in our Windows machine and using that we can connect it to our Linux server. If our machine is Windows, but on top of that, we install a tool called MOBA XTERM, then that is coming up with the Linux client so that we can use the SSH secure shell connection to our Linux server. So let us do that. How to connect to it? Copy the public IP address, go here, and our DevOps 7 p.m. mission. So Linux 7 p.m. mission is here. So just to edit the session and see yesterday's. IP address is different. Today's IP address is different. So that is the reason. Let us give the today's IP address and then just click on OK and then double click on it. So that now we will be able to connect to it. Yes, we were connected to it. Now, it is very important to understand. 
carefully observe please because from today onwards the linux commands and all we will discuss very clearly very clearly and very in depth we will discuss carefully observe and please ask any questions meaning raise your hand if you are not able to understand anything so that i will try to recall it again fine so as soon as we have been logged in there is a black screen is showing with the welcome to ubuntu and with the authenticating the public key imported open imported open ssh key that means we have given our private key linux 7 pm private key we have given this private key is authenticating with the public key so if both are hand shake then it is giving us the session connection information secure session connection to ubuntu this is the private ip public ip address of the machine ubuntu is the username so while connecting to this machine we have given username as the ubuntu because every linux distribution is coming up with one user so with that user whatever the user we gave with that user we have been logged in now if you can see what is the message it is showing welcome to ubuntu 20.04.4 long term support gnu slash like i think uh, you are not audible hello so i am not able to hear anything sorry guys i lost the connection sorry i lost the connection i am sharing my screen one more time i lost the connection i lost the connection i am sharing my screen one more time right so i hope you are now able to see my screen isn't it right so i am talking about this one gnu linux so linux also sometimes linux also sometimes termed as the gnu linux why because the richard stallman started this project called gnu that means gnu is not unix this meaning is g for gnu n for not u for unix so gnu is not unix is the project started by the richard stallman and have been created the many utility tools which were used by our linus torvalds who created the linux kernel so that is the reason as a gratitude he also named this linux kernel as a gnu linux that is the reason we can see welcome to ubuntu lts gnu linux 5.13.0 so linux kernel version is 5.13.0 whereas the ubuntu distribution which has been built by the debian open source community people is of the version 20.04. okay so the ubuntu distribution is using the linux kernel who is with the version 5.13.0 and this is the ubuntu machine isn't it so when every machine we will create not audible i think uh, uh, pavan just check your mic probably it is audible audible for all of us maybe it is problem with your mic just check however now see this every machine when we created every machine when we created with any linux distribution listen this word carefully please so when any distribution when any distribution when any linux machine we created with any distribution then definitely the distribution related information is available to us like 
its documentation, management, support, and all. Did you observe when we talk about the Debian distribution? The Debian distribution is is distributed. The Ubuntu distribution is created by the African company called Canonical, and the Canonical African company has distributed this Ubuntu as a as a CD or DVD for the desktop purposes. Later on time, this Ubuntu operating system, meaning the distribution, is also created for the server version. So if we can go to the official website of the Ubuntu, just let me go to official website of the Ubuntu. In the official website of the Ubuntu, we can see different flavors of the Ubuntu. For example, click on this download. Yes, you can see Ubuntu for desktop, Ubuntu for server, Ubuntu for IoT, Ubuntu for cloud. Four, four kind of flavors are available. Ours is not desktop because there is no graphical user interface for us except this black screen. So ours is what? Ours is the Ubuntu server. So we are using the Ubuntu distribution. That means Ubuntu server distribution for our AWS machines creation with the Ubuntu distribution. Fine. Now this is the system information when we have been logged into this machine and the usage of this system, 21.3 percentage of uh, 7.69 GB. This machine is just um, 1 GB machine. 1 GB machine we created, but the machine uh, hard disk is given with the 8 GB. For every for every for every AWS machine you will create. For every AWS machine you will create. Okay. For example. I will create quickly one Ubuntu machine, just quickly, not creation, but I can showcase you the steps. I would like to tell you why that is showing as 8 GB, because when we are creating the T2.micro machine, it is just one vCPU, one GB memory, meaning this is the RAM, one GB memory RAM. But when we go here, this RAM is also attached with the hard disk. See this? whose size is 8 GB. That is the reason. So this is the hard disk size. Out of 8 GB hard disk memory, 21% of the hard disk memory is utilized at the current moment. So users logged in are zero. The memory is 20%, almost 20% of 8 GB, meaning what 2 GB memory is using now. And this is the IPv4 address for ETH0, Ethernet0. IPv4 address is 172.31.4.65. This is the private IP address allocated for this machine when we are creating this machine. Fine. So once after all this done, there is a very interesting, uh, of course, this is now, um, you know, there is a, some time gap actually. If you don't use this console for a period of time, it will be automatically deactivated, but now activated, see. Finally, we have been logged in with the user called Ubuntu at the rate IP-172.31.4.65. Go to our machine, just let me cancel it. Scroll down, see this? 172.31.4.65. 172.31.4.65. This is what the private IP address. And then this is the user who have been logged in. Now, this is called as the command line. Now, we need to understand things very importantly. Just let me open my notepad and then write some theoretical discussion about this command line, right? So before, before understanding about this command line, 
first we need to understand about the bash shell what is the bash shell so let me write some notes which you can refer it later on time also right so i will upload this notes in our google classroom right so just let me change it to c hash uh, this one so date date is 10 june 2022 topic is linux commands this is the topic and demo number five which is the last demo to today demo number five which is the last demo today. so before understanding before understanding this black screen which is showing you with the ubuntu username which you have given while logging into this machine and private ip address tilde operator and then dollar symbol four parts are there before at the rate after at the rate and then tilde operator and then dollar symbol first of all what is this this is called as a bash shell this is called as a bash shell so once we logged in to the machine we will be landing on this one right so this is called as first command prompt this is called as command prompt this is called as command prompt this whole screen is the black screen whole black screen is called as the bash shell the whole black screen which i was just highlighted is called as the bash shell and into that bash shell we have been logged in using the user called ubuntu so that is called command line right? now let us see little bit history about the bash shell and then let us continue understanding this one okay so what is this bash shell let us try to understand a little bit history about this bash shell uh, sorry my bad sorry this try open right so what is bash shell so the programmer the programmer brian brian fox the programmer brian fox written written the first version of the carefully observe first version of the bash shell first version of the bash shell in the year 1980s 1980s as part of the gnu project as part of the gnu project yes shell is yes so what is the bash shell we are now discussing about the bash shell bash shell so the programmer Brian Fox written the first version of the Bash shell in the year 1980 as part of the GNU project. So GNU meaning what we know it is fully open source. Source code is downloadable. Source code is modifiable. What is the need that came to the GNU project to implement this Bash shell? what is the requirement or what is the, the need to implement or to write this bash shell as part of the gnu project so the name the name bash the name bash stands for the name bash stands for born born again shell the name bash stands for born again shell so b a s h from the shell it took s h so the bash stands for born again shell born again shell 
remember carefully remember carefully remember carefully bash stands for born again shell now now there is a born shell not born again shell born shell there is a born shell not born again shell there is a born shell so the born shell was one of the one of the one of the one of the unix shell born shell is the not born again shell i am talking about born shell initially when we have the unix operating system when we have the unix operating system in 1960s 1970s which is developed by the at and t bell laboratories when they were developed the unix operating system they have developed the born shell they have developed the one shell called born shell nothing but our command prompt like our command prompt they also developed one shell called born shell right but 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 this born shell this born shell is not an open source the born shell was not a free software not a free software so that the users could not modify could not modify and could not distribute it could not modify and could not distribute it right so that is the reason that is the reason when the unix operating system was there the unix was came by default with the born shell which is a which is a not open source not free that is the reason the gnu project folks the gnu project members thought of writing one unix like shell that means the born shell one unix like born shell they thought of writing that is the reason they were written one shell called born again shell called bash shell as an alternate to this commercial born shell the gnu people were written the open source shell and named it as born again born again it is born again shell not bow shell it is born again shell right so born again shell is an alternate to the bash shell which came as an open source as part of the gnu project now you got it right why gnu project he started developing the born again shell so the born shell was one of the unix shell but but this born shell was not a free software so that users could not modify and distribute so as a as in response to it as in response to it the gnu the gnu project members members thought of developing one unix born shell like unix born shell like shell and and named and named it as it as born again shell born again shell called bash which is most most popularly used most most popularly used shell script or shell is the bash shell right this is about the history of the bash shell how the bash shell is created and why it is created the bash the bash shell not bash born again born again is nothing but the bash shell right the bash shell is fire and uh, the most common linux shell so the the uh -huh. so okay 
so the my bad my bad just a moment so the bosch shell the bosch shell is the most commonly used linux most commonly used linux shell most commonly used linux shell so most linux distributions use the bosch shell most linux distributions most linux distributions use the bosch shell okay that means bosch meaning what born again a meaning again meaning open source one initially there is a born shell not a born again shell which is not an open source which is commercial but later as a counter to it the gnu people were created an open source shell called born again shell so this is about the bosch and now let us try to understand about the command prompt why we are understanding all these things we have because we logged in here and as soon as we logged in we have been landed on the screen what is this actually you have to know right what is this is so this is a bosch shell and uh, is also called as this is called as command prompt this is a shell this is a shell a bosch shell is opened with a command prompt so what is this command prompt meaning for right so there is a fixed symbol is coming here so what is that meaning for right so let me copy this and write in notes here by putting heading like command prompt everything everything please carefully observe there is a lot of meaning for everything so when we logged in when we logged in to the linux mission we will be landed we will be landed on the the bosch shell bosch shell command prompt command prompt like as below this is now carefully observe what is this carefully observe what is this the portion before this at the right symbol is the user name of the currently logged in user so the portion the portion the portion before at the right symbol portion before at the red symbol is is the logged in user name currently logged in user name this is currently logged in user name okay we have been we have been logged in as a user called ubuntu that is the reason ubuntu came there isn't it so you can see that in our mission in our machine when we are trying to connect to here so we have been given with the username called ubuntu so that is the reason once we have been logged in then we were landed on the bash shell with the command prompt the command prompt user called ubuntu so the at the rate symbol before at the rate symbol this user is called the currently logged in username then next what the next what so this currently logged in username will changed based upon the user logged into the based upon the user logged into the machine correct so this username this username might change might change based on the based on the different users logged in based on the different users logged in the machine perfect i i believe this is clear right so point 1 this is clear 
before the at the right portion is nothing but the username now carefully pay your attention carefully pay your attention the portion after at the right symbol but before the colon the portion after at the right symbol but before the colon right is the name of the machine is the name of the linux mission is the name of the linux mission is the name of the linux mission so let me write the same thing here the portion after at the rate symbol and before the colon symbol before the colon symbol is the name of the linux mission right so is the name of the linux mission that means ip 172.31465 is the name of the linux mission right is the name of the linux mission that we are using isn't it then then i think you are getting then the next part of the prompt this is called as what actually the prompt the command prompt we call it as a command prompt so the next part of the prompt after the colon after the colon right but before this dollar sign after the colon but before this dollar sign is called as a tilde 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 symbol tilde operator is called as a tilde operator which will shows the which will shows the current working directory which will shows the shows the working directory current working directory so i will write it the portion the portion after colon and before the dollar symbol is called as the tilde is called as the tilde is called as the tilde so which represents which represents the which represents the working directory which represents the working directory so the, the tilde symbol might not be an informative by looking into it it is not showing anything but underlying it will show in the bash shell the meaning of the tilde symbol meaning the always current working directory always current working directory so it may not be informative this tilde operator may not be informative but its meaning is what you know current working directory so let us see what is the current working directory so so here onwards we have the commands will start so to see the to see the current working directory to see the current working directory use the below command use the below command that is pwd pwd meaning print print working directory print working directory pwd meaning print working directory so the command what we have to use we have to use the command called after this we have to use the command called pwd so that it will display the current directory as slash home slash ubuntu the output of it what you know once you entered right so once you entered the output so once you click on it and then once you give this pwd and then once you entered then you will see the current working directory as ubuntu home slash ubuntu just see this home slash ubuntu so that means what for every logged in user for every logged in user there will be a directory must exist in the slash home not every logged in user i mean to say for every user created in the linux 
in Linux, every user created for that user, there will be a directory created under the home. So home is called as what now? The home is called as now directory, home directory. See this, there is a home. So which always created for every user that we can create in this mission. Till Linux also we can create the users, right? In Linux also we can create the users. For every user created, there will be a directory create. Just let me duplicate this tab. Yes. So see, by default, Ubuntu is a user logged in. So this is extracted. If the other user will be logged in, then the other user, when the registered, when user will be created in the Linux machine, then for every user created, there will be a directory created inside this home. So home is called as a user directory. Home is called as what? User directory. So that we will write. Are you getting me? For example, let me add one user. I'll explain again this command later in time. Add one user, John. Now user John added. Just let me refresh the folder. Sorry, only root user can add, right? So sudo space hyphen i. I'll explain what is this root user, what is Ubuntu user, I will explain. But as now we are discussing about this home directory. So what I will do is now I will add one user called John. Now the password is also John. Now the retype password also John. So first name is John. And room for all this information I entered. Yes. Now if you can see there is a directory created for John. Did you see this? That means what? For every user created on this machine, there will be a directory created in this. There will be a directory created in this home, home directory. So home directory is called as a working directory, not working user directory. This home directory is called as a user directory again we will discuss separately about the linux directory structure and file system okay but right now you just consider home is a user's directory and for every user created in the linux there will be a directory with the username created under the home directory and hence home is said to be a user directory clear right I believe this is clear, right? Now we understood everything about this prompt. Everything about this prompt. Then what is dollar sign? So we understood what is tilde. We understood before at the rate. We understood after at the rate. But we have not understand what is this dollar. So dollar will always represents the prompt. Prompt. Prompt meaning what? This command, command shell. Now see, when I go back to root user, I have not seen dollar. I just have seen hash. But again, when I go to this home user, sorry, when I go to this Ubuntu user, now see, we got the dollar. That means what every user who is logged in for whom a directory created in the home directory. So this dollar will represent the, this tilde will represent the current directory and dollar will represent the prompt. Prompt meaning the starting of the command line. So that is nothing but the prompt. So I believe we are clear, right? About this prompt and all. Now, let us see our Linux commands. So just let me clear everything and let us start now our Linux commands. So very first Linux command, 
so very first line x commands that we need to know is that we need to know is pwd uh, sir one question pwd hello hmm. sir there is uh, sir there is a question sir if if i type uh, any command in as a root user then it will be applicable to all the users uh, in that uh, uh, machine if i make any uh, uh, file or folder as a root user then will it be created for every uh, user that is there in the machine no no that is wrong actually that is wrong okay. there were two users there were two users for every distribution there are two users one is the admin user i think but the root user second one is the non admin user that is the non root user so the files are the directories created by the root user are by default visible or can be accessible for by the any of the user but if any of the user non root user create any file or directory that may not be accessible by the root users because a permissions are required the permissions are required got it right the visibility of the files and the directories created by the root are visible to everyone visible to everyone again we will discuss about it coming up sessions there is a separate session for us uh, called um, users so if you can go here in our um, uh, linux mission we have the uh, in linux uh, document so we will always discuss about the what is root user and what is the non root user all these things we will discuss in our coming up sessions definitely we will discuss okay but however so as we have now started the first command is pwd print working directory so this command will prints the prints the current working directory of the logged in user so pwd print working directory meaning this command will print the current working directory of the logged in user for example now i was logged in as a ubuntu user let me also switch to su meaning switch user let me also switch to the user called john and the password is john now see john is the user name here who have been now logged in now if we can see the john present working directory it is slash home slash john so pwd meaning what print working directory print working directory so that is the first command that we need to know meaning once we log in to the machine where are we is what we can know using this pwd next command next command who am i so this command is used to know about the logged in user logged in user for example who am i just enter see i am a john so logged in user who am i is a command used to know about the logged in user name right now after these two commands we need to go and then understand the linux users so in linux there were two users one is the root user second one is the non root user non root user in every every linux distribution will have the there are three types of root on the linux system then meaning that means the, okay there were two users for us in the linux system first of all there were two users in the linux distribution so what are they one is root and second one is 
none root. Again, if we talk about the root user, so there were three there were three root on Linux machine. There were three root on Linux machine. The first root is the root account. So root is an account or a username on Linux machine. And it is the most powerful account which has access to all commands and files. That means if you can see here, if you can see here, go back to this directory structure. Just let me reconnect to the SSH browser. Just let me reconnect. Yes, if you can go back here. So this is what root. So this is what root. So root is a user or account on Linux mission. And it is the most powerful account which has access to all commands and files. Then next, root as a slash. If you can see all these directories under one root directory called slash. All the directories like root, sys, boot, snap, var, usr, all these directories are under one root directory remember careful root directory is different root user is different root user is a directory under the root directory please carefully observe root directory is different root user is the different so slash is the root directory slash is the root directory root directory for the user root so there were three roots right one is the root account second one is the root directory and third one is the root home directory so here root this root is the home directory is so directly we cannot access but let me go back to sudo iphone i now to john so this john is not sudo user but let me go back to here Sudo I. There is a concept called sudo user. I will explain later on time. Now I am back to this root user. Let me print the working directory slash root. That means what? Slash root is the working directory for the user root. For example, let me hit one command lx hyphen l. I will explain about what is this command later on time. But if you can see, this is the root user. This is the group. Again, I will explain about the user and group details in coming up sessions. But what you can understand now, there is a root directory and there is a root user and there is a root home directory. So we have the three kinds of root in our Linux operating system. So let us discuss about the non root user difference between the root user non root user in our monday's session so there will be no session uh, for us tomorrow tomorrow whenever meaning whoever are interested you complete your registration process and monday onwards let us continue at the 7 pm with the rest of the linux commands and also the linux directory structure Okay, very important sessions. No breaks. Every day we will continue, mostly till Saturday. And every day we will discuss the, the Linux most important commands, Linux users, Linux file system, directory structure, everything we will discuss. Okay, so that's all for today from my side. Any questions yeah, sir, for me? Sir, please, yes, sir, please provide the recordings for today and yesterday because we can then uh, re 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 get sure. revision. Or for weekend sure. we can do sure. revision on weekend sure. so please provide yeah so sure so who have done your registrations and of course who have also not done your registrations both of you guys will get this recording so because every, okay so slash root home directory won't be there for us if you can see here 
if you can see here slash root is the directory and and if you can see for all the directories there will be a root directory called slash this is the root to directory this is the root to user directory there is a different this is the directory for the root user like how the john is the home slash john and home slash ubuntu for the users john and then ubuntu like how the slash home is the home directory for john and then ubuntu similarly root is a directory for the root user whereas the slash is the root directory which is parent directory of all these other directories including root directory as well okay clear what, what does root user contain sir and uh, what information does this root user contain exactly so those are all the things that we will discuss in our coming up section because we have to discuss about this linux directory structure if we understand this then you will understand what the the root user contains what root user can do so these are all the things we can understand once we have done this linux directory structure okay this we will discuss on monday sir last right? one more right. sir last so one. sir hello hmm. ha sir uh, when we uh, log go ahead in, go ahead please go ahead sir when we log in as a root user or non root user that time we will put some password so that password why sir it's uh, hidden uh, why in windows it showing uh, means it's hidden but it's showing but here we type but it's not showing sir why is there any reason uh, there is a reason actually first of all the users who enter the password are are maybe the users created uh, the users created are two types one is the pseudo user second one is the non pseudo user in linux everything is a file system everything is a file even this directory is also is also a file system basically so likewise a user when created there is a file i will showcase that file on monday when the user will be created there is a file in that file the password will be stored as a masked plain text the password will be shown as a masked masked meaning what you cannot see that password masked meaning it is come kind of encoded invisible you cannot see it so for the security purposes the linux won't showcase the password stores so sir can we change that uh, it is a fun sir can we change that Yes, yes, we can change that password. We can change. No, no, we not password, sir. Uh, that invisible to visible mode. We can, we can change that. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Invisible to visible, also we can make that. We can. Oh. Make yeah. Thank sir, you so much, folks. I have sir, to jump to another session. Yeah. Sir, I am from non-IT background. Wait, I don't know. Yes, sir, I am from completely non-IT background. Can I join this course, DevOps course? It will be helpful me in the future to enter into the IT field. yeah uh, definitely it will be helpful in fact you know the devops is the best platform to enter into the it field from the non it field but rather than like uh, how the it people will work you have to do little more stretch actually meaning going forward there will be devops tools linux we will continue right you have to double practice but definitely this is the best platform to convert your non it career to it career Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, folks. I have to hello, join the session. Hello, sir. Session. Hello, sir. Mm. Uh, quick question: How do I practice yeah, all ahead, these commands? Ahead, okay. So to practice all these commands, Monday I will explain how you can create a free AWS account so that you can create a free AWS account and then access the machine like how I am accessing. and then practice but how to create a free aws account how to create this ec2 machine again i will showcase on monday okay so that okay, you can connect you, to it and then practice the materials the commands and all i will